interested on in the art of inventing, I might say that uh, I got into inventing by a very early age, probably 11 or 12. And uh, my first inventions were, oh, things like telegraphs and, and uh, all kinds of things I just built. I made uh, crystal radios and uh, so at a very early age I just started uh, experimenting with things. I built uh, motor scooters and uh, just tried all kinds of, of ideas and learned the skill of, of uh, not only how to build things, but how to repair things. So I started out not knowing at the time that uh, I was becoming an inventor. I was not aware. I just found that uh, I like to work with uh, scientific and electrical things and figure out how they worked. And sometimes uh, I would get into uh, uh, having to come up with creative solutions to uh, some repair problems. And so, so then, of course, I got out of, uh, of uh, the Army and then went to uh, University of Colorado and, and I got a degree in engineering. And uh, then I got out of uh, college in 1950. There were thousands of engineers had graduated and there were no jobs. So I went on my own and I started out, because there were no engineering jobs, I went into repairing, uh, usually industrial electronic things, sound systems. So I went on my own and uh, started uh, uh, building or repairing, but then I that led into, I'd find problems in various organizations like food processing, potato chips, and they would have a lot of problems and I would come up with designing equipment to actually put the production lines to help production. And so I would build special devices. And so I started building a reputation of doing this. and. Uh, the result was that I wandered around into an amazing variety of uh, industries to where I always took my electronic knowledge and used it to solve problems. Now this, in solving the problems, this was the beginning of inventing. Just from here. So since I get this out to show the ore, and uh, yeah. Yeah. and then out of that, I saw the need for Geiger counters. So I came up and uh, formed a company, and we started building Geiger counters. Well, this Geiger counter was unique in the industry for one reason. These are Geiger tubes. They sent radiation. So by putting a group of them together, I could get a more sensitive Geiger counter. And I and, and this was very appealing to prospectors because they could take this thing with them out into the field and hopefully find uranium ore. So I started a small company manufacturing Geiger counters. And the first, uh, I started in a uh, garage, and then that was successful. But at the same time, I continued to uh, explore other ideas. The important point was I always solved somebody else's problem. And that is important to anybody that's inventing. Don't invent what you want find a company or an organization that has a problem and if you have an expertise and you can solve their problem, this is the route that I took and uh, I think that is a, 
a better direction to go because inventing is only part of the problem of solving whatever a difficulty is. You must, it's companies that I would do inventing for would, uh, some of it would be a product they would want to market. Like one of them was, I, I came up with a device called a inverted triode. Oh yeah, here we go. And this, so I'm actually using this. This is a, right in here is a vacuum tube that is very new. It's called an inverted triode. The little tube is sealed in this black thing. But what that was, a, one of my most important inventions. So I developed this in order to help me in servicing all kinds of nuclear equipment. We built a number of instruments, like this was a voltmeter that was based upon this and was very successful. We sold hundreds of these. We're so developing a system for detecting the presence of ionized clouds, which would cause if the there would be a current flowing from the crowd to ground and if that reached a certain magnitude the possibilities of a lightning strike occurring were very great. So in developing that we developed that and built a lot of these instruments which were then used uh, in Long Cape Chernobyl and also uh, any place that they were uh, fearful of lightning. So this was a successful invention. In the process of doing that, we were set up one afternoon with our equipment in the field, watching a dark cloud come over. We were measuring the current, and they took this inverted triode to measure it. Then what happened was somebody was smoking a cigar, and it interfered with our experiment. But that, through a long series of events, led to the development of the smoke detector. All right, this is the first uh, <coughs> wired smoke detectors using the inverted triode. It's the fir first production models. And, and one of the uh, first applications was to equip the Queen Mary, which was opened as a museum in California, and the law required that each cabin have smoke detectors, so we installed these. These were one of our first jobs. So that's the model that went into the Queen Mary. Then they, this company called Statatrol, run by a Dwayne Pearsall, they started manufacturing and uh, detectors, and I only worked as a consultant to them. But we did have a patent on this, which was paid for by the P.K. Sweeney Company, and they gave the Statatrol Company the right to use that as a patent. They gave to them free of charge, I thought was quite... It was a P.K. Sweeney was one of the best managed companies I ever dealt with. But here again, I was working with a company that would find problems and then I would work with them and another engineer called Ed Abel. He was a wonderful designer. And so I worked with this company and their engineers to develop a series of products. And I also did, a, I was a consultant to the Stanitrol company in the design of this uh, particular thing and also uh, Two patents were issued on that, and again I was licensed as the inventor. Then I came across a new technology called a CMOS transistor, and it's not very big, but it replaces that and it takes very little power. So it would do everything that would do, but better, more efficient. So that led to the battery-operated smoke detectors. I got a patent on this. As a matter of fact, the prototype using this is this. This was the first prototype of a smoke detector. And through that, I, I, I had my best patent. 
and uh, that led to a long series of of legal and technical problems. It's a long story, but the Satterfield Company taking that invention, they built a company of almost a thousand people manufacturing smoke detectors. This is a uh, experimental prototype board and uh, I was working with a company in Tucson and there the object of what we're trying to do is to measure the uh, BTU content of natural gases. We have gas mixtures and they'd like to know what the heat energy is so this is my development project, project trying to refine the electronics. I worked with a very uh, brilliant uh, physicist in this company. It was his idea and I worked with him in the development. This will then simplify down into something like that. But I like this spread out so I can change parts and experiment. Where this, once you freezer design, it's almost impossible to change. So this is an illustration of the kind of, of uh, work I would do with the company. My interest is, would be to make a tape that would convey to people what the, and I will call it the art of inventing. Uh -huh. Well, and that's See, what we're talking about here. Because uh -huh. inventing is both uh, art and it's not all science. So my point is to take my experiences, what I've learned from inventing, and to try to deal not so much with all of my inventions, but what I had learned from this that would be important to other people that have creative minds. So inventing is one function of the creative mind. And that's, uh, I think it's important that people understand uh, the nature of creativity and my focus has been inventing in the sciences so I come from that orientation but that's not the only direction that in creative people need to go it's that's mine it's just one experience mostly with with uh, electromagnetics electricity and uh, that applied to all kinds of solving problems in the world. Okay, good. Okay.